Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how and why to use the Unity event system. Uh, I did a video on event systems a while back. This is slightly different. I should reword it. It's Unity event. They're two different things. Uh, Unity events like this are used for calling uh, functions from objects and you can set these functions in the uh, inspector. And it means that you don't have to hard code particular things. It lets your scripts be more generic and useful in other situations. You don't have to have like multiple scripts for different things when you can keep a generic one. Um, the only disadvantage is obviously you have to maintain it and make sure that like everything you've got is on there. But the benefit is when you want to add new things, you don't have to add any new code, you just press a plus button. And I'll get into it. You'll have used it before slightly, but I'm showing you how to use it yourself for your own custom scripts because uh, some people don't know that. So uh, I want to start off by thanking my patrons. Thanks to uh, Paul Robinson, Fulbaum and Wesley for their $5 donations this month. Anyone else that wants to help out or would like to or whatever, then link is in the description below. Apart from that, let's get into it. I uh, quickly also want to say uh, my microphone's been acting up weirdly and I've ordered a new one, so hopefully that comes as soon as possible. Until then, I'm going to make do. Um, I'm trying to move as little as possible because it seems that when I don't move, my headset doesn't make fuzzy sounds. Um, but if it keeps being a problem, I still want to keep putting out videos for you guys, but then as soon as my new headset comes, I can re-record certain videos if they've been really bad, but um, if they've, like, audio's been messed up. But I'll try and reduce that as much as possible right now, and we'll see. So let's get into it. Um, I have a cube here. Obviously, it's the same scenes last time. doesn't matter. You don't need anything prepared for this. Um, I'm just going to show you what I mean. So if you have um, the UI, for example, you get a UI button. I guess you know, everyone's had a UI button before. You go put it wherever. It doesn't really matter. Let me just um, go 2D mode button. So on the button, it would be nicer if it was easier to click in the scene. So let's just put it there. Um, you'll notice the button has this on click, list empty, whatever. Um, and as you know, if you press the button, uh, nothing's going to happen. I mean, the color might change because that's what this does. But basically, when you click on the button, it calls anything you've put in here. So this on click, you can press add to add more stuff. You can, for example, drag in. Uh, the cube, you can do a game object, uh, set active ball, false, and if I press play, um, press the button, the cube's now inactive, because it runs any code you've got on there when it's on click. Now obviously this is a built-in version, right, so when Unity, Unity themselves um, made the button class, they added a uh, event on it called on click that is called when it receives a click and it calls anything you've had on here or the technical term is invoking now the best thing about this is that you can add as many as you want you can remove them whatever you know you set it manually in here whatever but you can also write your own classes to obviously use them you know if anything's on here and another, cl uh, another class you can use it on your own in pretty much every situation as far as I'm aware so if we write our own script like um I don't know, on the cube we'll go write a script called like event testing. Now, um, yeah, I'll show you a few different things you can do with it. So first of all, to use it in the first place, you need to be using um, unit using unity engine.events. There you go. So that's the library you need. Um, and then we'll get rid of this code. So let's zoom in. What do we need for this? Well, first of all, we need like the actual way to add to the interface on here so that we can see the events. So the way you do that, public unity event, my event or, you know, event to call, I don't know, whatever you want. Um, generally you should call this um, like on something. That's the usual naming thing. Uh, naming convention because it's like on click on this on that it's like on um take damage or something right um just like this so that means that when we go out here you'll see if i give it a second to compile oh the script's gone oh well i'll set it back on in a second um what was it called again event testing so you'll see event testing oh i've got it twice now that's weird um, we now have the on take damage event. This is like the event UI. You press add, you get a new one. You can drag stuff in and whatever. So like, let's say when I take damage, I want, um, I don't know, the directional light to, uh, you, know, you can do whatever. And you can call functions on it. Um, you can set values. So like um, float range. Let's look at the light's current range. I mean, this is actually a directional light, so that's not even relevant, to be honest. Well, let, fine, let, let's delete the directional light. 
we'll add a um, point light. Uh, let's just go put it near the actual thing. Let's bring it up on the Y. All right, we've got a point light above the player, okay? Um, let's just increase the range and the intensity a bit. Okay, we've got this point light. Now maybe when you press this button, you don't want to hard code it, uh, not even a button, sorry, on this uh, cube, you've got some code. And this point light, you might want to set the range um, or the intensity, right? The intensity is currently um, two point something. So we can say like 0.5, <coughs> sorry. Um, now we just need some way of invoking that function. So we might have a thing here saying uh, in the update, maybe in the update we'll say um, if input dot mouse button down zero. So if we press left click uh, on take damage dot invoke. And what that means is um, it, as you see here, everything we've put all callbacks on the actual um, list over here on the uh, event list, they'll all get called. Everything you've put on there will get called. So the actual object doing the invoking doesn't need to like know in code. It doesn't have to be hard coded to, you know, go t talk to this, go talk to that. So for example, maybe like um, you have a damageable script and you have a an event for take damage and for die and for whatever else. And then um, on the take damage, you can then drag in the enemy's health UI to like update the health bar. Um, when they take damage, you might drag in the... Um, I, in my game, I have like a B-Stream manager that stores data on killed enemies. So like you can, um, the more you kill of an enemy, the more info you get about them when you look in your B-Stream and so on. Um, so yeah, if we press play um, and we just click in the scene, you see we actually change the intensity. Now obviously if I do it again, it's just gonna set it to the same value. Um, but as well as calling, like light.intensity is just a value that you can actually change. Um, this is just be a public variable on the light. Well, what we can do is we can write our own um, functions to call. So if we had like um, public void um, change light intensity, for example. Um, now obviously we would just have to have a um, reference to a light source. Uh, so if we then said light dot intensity is equal to um, Well, what I can do is I can say, yeah, light dot intensity is equal to um, light uh, dot intensity. Sorry, question mark. Well, I'll say is equal to um, zero point five f question mark, um, and then I can give two cases. So if um, the intensity is zero point five. Then I can say light dot intensity or set it equal to um, two else light dot intensity is equal to zero point five f. I'll just put uh, f there as well. So basically, we're saying we're going to set the light intensity equal to, and then if the light intensity is zero point five, we'll set it to two. Otherwise, we'll set it to zero point five, and then basically it's a toggle. So one line to do a toggle between those two values. Um, let's just call what well, we can call it light, um, whatever, just get rid of this. Um, so now that we've got that and we invoke it and so on, all we need to do now is go back in here, give it a second. And the cube obviously wants to know about a light. Um, so point light. Now, obviously this is a bad example because, um, whoops, point light because you would have these split up right you wouldn't have it on the same script maybe I'd have a different script with the light or like a different script telling you what to do with the light I've just done it here for simplicity uh, if we now drag in the thing itself which obviously you could just call it inside the code but event testing um, change light intensity right so whenever we trigger that thing which is when we press left mouse button we're gonna call that function so we can toggle between the two lights that's an example um, and then I still have the button link to uh, setting the game, object, uh, game object to set active false. Now, uh, what else might want to do with this? The last thing to cover is you can actually encode dynamically add callbacks. So just like we click a plus and add something in, you can um, pass in things to basically change when you um, 
click on the button. So let me just find it. Okay, so here we are. What we want to do is we want to perhaps say um, on the start. Let's let's at the start. So uh, void start. Let's say this change light intensity. Uh, let, let's pretend. Well, not let, let's do it actually. Let's let's just remove it. Okay, we don't have any callbacks. But then in the code, what we can do is we can say um, the on take damage. So that's the actual event. Dot add listener, and it takes in an action call, a uh, Unity action. Now functions count as a uh, Unity action. So if we pass in um, change light intensity, no um, parameter things there, just change light intensity. <coughs> it means that it's going to add that function to be called as one of the um, one of the listeners. So if we actually go back and we press play when it's compiled. You'll actually see that it should be added onto here. Or apparently it doesn't visually get added on there even though it is on there, which is interesting actually. Because I see it's happening, it's just um, not visually on here. Which doesn't matter, but you can see the point, it's actually added the listener. Um, oops. So. Yeah, I've, this has been a ten, 10 minute video covering the main things you need to know about events. Um, there is a little bit more about them, I guess, um, that I could do in another video if you wanted, but this is the main use. This is the, you know, primarily everything you'll use it for. Um, so if you did like this video, obviously leave a like and subscribe, it would mean a lot. Uh, feel free and I encourage you to leave video suggestions in the uh, comments below. Just tell me what you want to see, what you need help with, what you want me to cover. Um, but apart from that, if you haven't already joined the Discord server, I'd recommend doing that as well, but it's up to you. Um, and that is everything. I've said all the outro stuff, so thanks for watching. hope my headset didn't mess up too much. Um, thank you, and goodbye.